there are some things that you can do that will drastically impact um, how fast you learn and how effective you are while you're learning. Hello and welcome to the While You Render YouTube segment. <laughs> That's what I decided to call this thing. Uh, thank you for everyone who suggested names. I really liked While You Render because it's the sort of, uh, sort of thing you would watch while you're bored waiting for something to render. So today's question comes from a fella called CTM Podcast. Great name. What piece of advice that you know now would you like to have known when you got started with Blender? Good question, sir. Now, the advice that I would give actually has nothing or very little to do with actually Blender. It's more to do with how you approach learning. Um, and it's something that most people don't even realize is important, and I certainly didn't when I got started. So to tell you my story, if you haven't heard it already, I know I've said it like a parrot many times, but uh, I got started um, learning Blender uh, when I was in high school. I think I was 15 at the time, I'm now 28. Um, and I really liked the game Need for Speed and I was playing it one night and I was watching the little car on the turntable and I was like, oh man, I really wanna make my own 3D car. So I went online and I found an image that someone had made using this software called Blender. So I thought, if they can do it, I can do it. So I'm gonna learn that software until I can make that car. Uh, but the way that I actually approached learning was really bad, really blase, just all over the shop, like spontaneous, like a kid walking through a store, like, ooh, that looks interesting. Ooh, that looks interesting. Um, and as a result, I sort of just, that goal was just put off, put off, put off, put off, making the car. Because I was just like, oh, I'll do this tutorial, that tutorial. I didn't really know what I was doing. And I just jumped around all over the shop and I would give up. Like I would hit this, this roadblock and I'd be like, oh, that project failed. I couldn't finish it because I didn't know how to do the lines around the grenade or whatever it was that I was making. And I just felt like this demotivation, right? So I've since learned now um, over the last few years in particular, um, there are some things that you can do that will drastically impact um, how fast you learn and how effective you are while you're learning. Um, so I'm gonna outline some of them in this video. Um, some of them you might've already heard if you've watched my presentation, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Artists. If you haven't, you can watch that after this. But this video will sort of give like a, a bit of an outline, a few other things um, in this video. So let's get to it. First thing is, is that you need to have a clearly defined goal for what it is that you want to learn. Okay, so you say you wanna learn Blender. Specifically, what do you wanna learn in Blender? Because there's a thousand things that you could do. There are people making architecture, they're making cars, they're making scientific visualizations, there's character animation, character design, rigging, animation, yada, yada, yada. You could just, the list goes on forever, right? So the reason that that's a problem, if, if you don't have a, a clearly defined goal, is that, like I mentioned at the start, you will just be jumping from everywhere and you'll just be in constant reactive mode. You'll see on Facebook, like someone posted a tutorial on making marbles. You'll be like, oh, that looks cool. Um, this one, oh, that looks cool. And you just jump all over the shop and you'll you'll also feel a little bit sad inside because you'll feel like that goal of whatever it is that you truly love is being put off. And it, it's like, you, you'll feel like, oh man, I've been working you know, for like three years on Blender and I still haven't achieved what I'm gonna do. And I can't do that because I don't know how to do it. Oh, it's so sad, right? Whereas if you had a clear goal and you said, right, I really like post-apocalyptic environments, right? I just wanna be the guy that just makes post-apocalyptic environments, right? that now you know specifically what it is you're going for. You know that you can ignore all the tutorials on characters, uh, animals, maybe, um, and you wanna be focusing on like nature and city design or something like that. that. That's your focus. So now you know when you see a tutorial on character rigging, you can ignore that. You can just focus on uh, what it is that you wanna do. It's actually a quote I'll read here by Tim Ferriss from the book Four Hour Chef, which is 
a great book for learning if you want to if you want to know. Uh, the easiest way to avoid being overwhelmed is to create positive constraints. Put up walls that dramatically restrict whatever it is that you're trying to do. So constraints. Remember that having this clearly defined goal is going to give you that constraint to help you get towards it. So number two, deconstruct deconstruct the process that you're going to follow to get towards your goal. Um, so I, I highly recommend spending at the very start, like once you've figured out your goal, deconstruct that goal and figure out how you're going to get there. So the way I, I recommend doing this is go online, find some artists that that you admire that are achieving the work that you want. So the post-apocalyptic environment guy, you, you, you'd find somebody who's, who's done some really nice pieces, figure out what how they learned. Um, maybe they've said in a blog somewhere or, or an article the specific things that, that really helped them. A lot of artists have, have, have done interviews like that. Um, or maybe they just follow specific people. You can follow those people and figure out what influenced them, how they got it. And just you, you learn through like researching this stuff and just going through all that all that stuff that there are, there are, um, what do you call it? There are similarities between them. Like there are a few things that, um, like there's like this one book that all artists recommend and they all say, you got to read this book. This book is amazing. Um, or they say, you know, there's these three core areas that most people gloss over and they just completely ignore it. So now, you know, you got to do them. Um, and so then just basically start putting it in the right order that you think you should be learning it. So maybe if you're completely new to 3D, it's cover the basics. Then it's um, you know get get good at hard surface modeling if you're the the post apocalyptic environment guy. I don't know why I picked that topic. It's such a long one to say, but uh, you, you you figure out the uh, the exact process and the priority that you use um, for for the work. Number three is have an established routine. Okay, so this is one of the most important things and it's one thing, it's the thing that most artists don't do. It's having a clearly defined routine, a, a, a clearly defined plan for when you're actually going to do the work and you need to be working on it every single day. Now, I know what you're thinking, you think, well, okay, well, I, I, have, I have work, um, I have a job or I have school during the day, so I, I can't work on this. Yeah, look, I, I have work as well. Everybody's got work. Um, your job is to figure out how you can fit this, this, this new goal that you've got into that day. Um, and the reason that it's important to do it every single day is that you probably are, are planning or imagining that there'll be one weekend where you've got all this free time, right? The wife will have the kids, they'll, they won't be a distraction or you won't have any assignments or schoolwork to, to work on and you just be able to focus on just that thing. But those large blocks of time, that 20, 48 hour period or whatever it is, they very rarely ever plan out. Um, and even when they do, we're often not prepared for it and we fill it up with other stuff. We're like, woohoo, look, no one's at home. I'm just going to go do Overwatch for five hours or, or whatever, right? So th th they very rarely ever pan out. And so you want to be putting in the shortest amount of time, like JK Rowling, she wrote the Harry Potter series while she had, while she was raising her first child, I believe. Um, and just using whatever time she had, like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there to just put in the work every single day. Um, so don't, don't put it off and wait for that big block of time because it's never going to happen. It won't happen right? Um, you, you need to be doing the daily work. There's a great quote. Um, it's in my presentation, but it's that uh, daily work will always beat the spasmodic Hercules. So yeah, forget the guy, the two friends that stayed up for 48 hours and made a video game. That's a really fun story. And we like hearing that stuff. But the vast, vast majority of great artists across history got to where they were by doing daily work. So focus on that. Number four, have a release schedule. So this is one that I, I have recommended to many artists over the years. Um, and this is to have a clearly defined frequency that you're going to be publishing artwork to and sticking to it. So say, announce that you are going to be finishing one piece of artwork every week 
or every fortnight or whatever it is. But you need to have that upfront, that frequency figured out, and you need to stick to it. Now, the reason that this is so important is um, as per Parkinson's law, that a task will swell in complexity to fill the time that you allot to it, right? So if you say, all right, I'm gonna take three months to finish this portrait, this character, right? Three months. Or you say, I'm gonna finish this, this character in one week. At the end of it, you're still gonna have a finished character, okay? If you had to get it done, you would get it done, right? And yeah, some might, they might be a little bit different, okay? But they're still, you would have spent the whole time, uh, you, you would have spent the, the time that you had allotted for that task. Like if you gave a classroom like a, a month to finish a diorama, they wouldn't finish it on day two and go like, oh, we finished, now what do we do? They drag it out. And that's just human nature. That's just, it's what we do. So I see, um, I see this a lot and it's really, uh, it's sad to see, but a lot of beginners, they are spending way too long on artwork that they need to just move on from. Like there are people I follow on Twitter and they're still posting the same artwork again and again and again, like like works in progress. And they've been doing it for like four or five months. And it's like something basic, like a candle on a table. And they're getting advice from people. What can I do to fix it? How can I, can I make this better and somehow can I add a texture? And it's like, yeah, what you need to do is move on. You need to get to your next piece of artwork, okay? Because, and, and this is why this is important, right? The perfectionist stage, like if this is the length of work, like this is the beginning of your artwork and then this is the end. The perfectionist stage, it takes up a huge chunk of time, like probably about half of it. If you're a real perfectionist, like you spend a lot of time just tweaking settings and changing the camera slightly, all that stuff, it takes up a huge amount of time. But the learning, the real learning actually gets done in that first bit, okay? So you want to be trying to, you want to try to do that first bit a lot. So that is why I recommend having a, a having this release schedule so that you get on with the next piece. Um, and you, you, you call it quits. Like you've got to know, you've got to kill your darlings. You've got to publish it. You've got to abandon the artwork. You have to know when to finish it for the love of Pete. Just put it out, you know? Um, so if, if you could spend, and, and so this is the other thing, don't go too short of a time frame. Like some artists, they try and do a daily artwork. Like there's a bit of a trend at the moment. I think that Beeple guy, he's one of them. His is all right, his is sort of abstract. It's a little bit faster to produce. But I think most of it started from like sketches, like daily sketches. Um, and that's okay for 2D because you can do a sketch in a day, in a few hours. Um, it's, it's not that hard, but 3D, there's a lot more involved in it. Um, and if you are trying to pump out too fast, you are gonna rush over um, things and you're gonna start forming some really bad habits. So you need to make sure that you, you've got a, a frequency, but it's not too short. I, I don't like the daily one. I think it's a, it's a mistake, but I recommend a week. I think a week is really good. So give that a shot. Please let me know how you go. Number five. Practice alone does not make perfect. You need to be actively pushing yourself into your areas of weakness. So humans are very good at avoiding pain. We just do it naturally. If there is two different things, you know, that there's two routes to work, we'll go for the one that has the flat bit at the start because that's easy to walk on rather than the, the hill at the start. You know, we, we just naturally do this. And so, and it's also the reason why so many of us find it difficult to sit down at the computer and actually work on Blender because there's a bit of pain with that. There's a bit of resistance. Um, but even when you're doing work in Blender, you can often also fall into the habit of, uh, of starting things that you already know that you can do. So if you've already done one interior, right? Uh, you know how to do that. Doing another interior isn't necessarily gonna help you as much as sculpting a character, okay? If you wanted to become a full rounded artist, if you're an architectural artist and that's your focus, go for it. That's a really good idea. But uh, but if, if you wanted to do characters, but you've sort of been putting it off and you're like, oh, I don't know. Like it's difficult, but yeah, you gotta go straight towards what is giving you the pain. So attack those weaknesses. Um, yeah, there's that, this old phrase, you know, practice makes perfect or you've got to, 
there's there's 10,000 hours required before you master something. I think mo like, like that's largely BS because I see a lot of people that have been, like I've seen some people that have been using Blender for like 13 years and there are people that have been using Blender for like two or three and they're already better than them. So clearly time is not the only factor there, it's what you're actually focusing on. So if you are actively pushing towards what gives you pain and getting into the nitty gritty stuff, the stuff that you really hate because it's so difficult and you don't understand it especially, um, that is how you're rapidly gonna grow. So that's how you can increase your effectiveness and efficiency um, of learning, okay? So give that a try. Number six, get critiques. Um, especially critiques from anybody in the industry, uh, it can save you a lot of time, like weeks, if not months of trial and error trying to figure things out for yourself. Because somebody that is experienced can look at your work and see things that you will not understand, that you, you can't see because your eye just, you're just not used to it. So you can stare at an image all you want but, and you'll never be able to see the true problems with it but if you handed it to an industry professional, they could say, oh, well, the reason that the whole image just feels a little bit bland is that there's no story to it. The character, there's not, there's no dynamic facial expression. It's not saying anything. The, you know, if you wanna make it the scene more balanced, you gotta tilt the head slightly like this, put the, the light from this angle or whatever. They'll just say a bunch of things, which just sounds crazy to you almost. It's like, oh, that never, never in a million years would I have thought of that. Um, but that it, it's, it's like a shortcut to success. And it's why mentorships and connections, networking, all that stuff is really so important. Is that, yeah, you can get a group of people which are just, yeah, that can help you. And it's just incredibly powerful. Um, so that's also the big challenge though, is how do you find a mentor? Um, I have rejected everybody that has asked to become my mentor um, because it's 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 just like asking somebody to do a job for you right it's it's like going up to a professional like guy who works at disney and say hey can you be my mentor it's saying like i'm going to call you and i'm going to ask you questions i'm going to give you my artwork to critique and you have to do that instead of spending time with your family <laughs> right it's a really bad proposition so you have to be contributing value to them in some way i won't go into it in this video um, there are a bunch of other videos on YouTube. Just type in how to get a mentor or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big thing. But yeah, if you can get critiques, go for it because it will save you uh, a lot of time. And number seven, the one, the granddaddy to, uh, to rule them all is give yourself a consequence. So this is the uncomfortable part of the list. Um, everybody's on board up until this part. Consequence makes people like, eh, I don't like that. Um, a consequence, I'll give you an idea. So I did, as I mentioned in my presentation, I did a 2D art challenge that I inflicted on myself because I had wanted to learn 2D artwork for years, but I never got around to it. So I told myself, I am going to learn it within six months. I'm going to get a thousand likes on ArtStation. And the consequence was that if I didn't achieve it, that I was going to give my cousin, my younger cousin, who's like a sibling rivalry, whatever, I was going to give him a thousand dollars. Okay. And I didn't want to do that. Um, so that was a very powerful force of motivation um, to, uh, to make me do it. And that was the factor really the only factor that um, that helped me succeed that. And I did actually achieve it within a few days of it down to the deadline. Um, it's incredibly powerful. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but if there was an artist that had a consequence and an artist that didn't have a consequence, I would 100% put all my money on the guy with the consequence because he's gonna do so much more than the one without it. It's also why some people say like, you should go to university because there's the consequence there. There's a monetary consequence of if you fail this course, you're gonna to have to retake it and that's gonna cost you X amount of dollars, okay? Um, and people still fail it anyway because they don't have to pay it up front, you know. I don't think you need to go to university. I can do another video on that if you want. Um, but I, yeah, you, you can set this up yourself for a very small amount. So 1% of your yearly salary, you can use that as the sort of benchmark. Um, so it might, like if you're earning $100,000 a year, it will be 1% of that would be your, your um, wager, I guess, in this. And then you find an organization or somebody that you don't wanna give 
stuff too, like the KKK group of America or the uh, NRA guns if you're anti-gun, whatever it is. You want to find something that you don't like and then you say you're going to give it to them and you have to tell other people you're going to do it as well. Um, and it's just, it's an incredible force. It's so uncomfortable, which is why it's so effective. Um, but yeah, I want to know if anyone actually does that because that would be really cool to, uh, to see your progress because I know you're actually going to do it if you, uh, if you say that, if you said that. So that is my uh, advice. I've got a, um, if you want sort of like a template form of this video, I have got a Google Doc, which I've put the link underneath this video where you can fill it in and you can also see my example there as well. Um, and as well as that, if you want to learn some more facts, you can watch it in the video, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Artists, which you can also find in the description or if you click the little I at the top there, uh, or whatever. Um, otherwise, please leave your next question, a question for the next while you render episode um, in the comments. And um, I'll try and pick an interesting one for the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.